Hello, I'm Dr. Lynn Paget, and I'm a clinical health psychologist. I'm here today with Amelia Ballard. She's a childhood cancer survivor. Amelia and I are going to talk about some of the unintended side effects of cancer treatments. I'm sure you've heard people talk about chemo brain when referring to a group of cognitive impairments, such as problems with learning, language, concentration, or memory during and after cancer treatment. These problems can profoundly affect survivors' daily functioning. So, Amelia, how did chemo brain affect your experience in school and in work? Yes, so um, as you mentioned, I am a pediatric cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. I was first diagnosed with leukemia when I was 17 months old and then relapsed when I was three years old. So throughout my treatment mm -hmm. process, I received a lot of chemotherapy as well as cranial and total body radiation. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, chemo brain is definitely been one of the, uh, the things that I've had to deal with in my life. So I would say during treatment, it's hard to remember because I was so young, mm -hmm. especially in the hospital setting, but I remember outside of the hospital when I would be at home as a young child, my mom would ask me to do basic chores, mm -hmm. basic tasks, and that would take a lot of time. I did have cognitive testing throughout the chemo and radiation. Mm -hmm. I remember doctors would come in and ask me questions based on developmental milestones to make sure mm -hmm. I was progressing and not deteriorating or yeah. to see what we needed to do to maintain my, my functioning. But other than that, I remember my last battery test was when I was 15 years old mm -hmm. and I have not had one since. So I'm, I might be overdue for one of those. I need to ask <laughs> my doctor about that. And then you asked about how it affects my work and kind of education. Yeah. So from the age of like 10 when I was in middle school and high school, I always had to take my test outside of the classroom. Mm -hmm. We kind of learned this the hard way when in the classroom I would get very easily distracted by any noises, any sounds. I would get very bad testing anxiety when all my classmates were finishing way before me, they were turning in their test. And so we found out that I would be able to take my test outside the classroom. And this was very beneficial. I had the resources I needed, the time that I needed, and this continued through my high school. And I think this really paid off with my academics. Wow, that is a really compelling story. So were there times where you found maybe when you were under stress or multitasking that your symptoms felt worse? Definitely. I feel like when I am giving multiple tasks at hand mm -hmm. or put under any pressure, a lot of times, this sounds crazy, but my, my mind just blanks. I feel like I definitely have a harder time with memory and concentration, yeah. especially during multitasking and specific tests. And I have a question for you, Dr. Okay. Paget. I'd like to ask, what can patients do during and after treatment to help us cope with these with these symptoms. Oh, great, well, I'm glad you asked. Um, a lot of patients suffer chemo brain during treatment, um, and but then they're sometimes surprised when it continues after treatment, sometimes like you've experienced for years. So about 17 to 75%, we have these large estimates of patients suffer some kind of cognitive symptoms. And one thing we wanna encourage patients to do is tell their providers and identify these symptoms if they're given an opportunity to. And one of the ways they can do that is through what we call psychosocial distress screening. Okay. This is a way that patients can report psychological symptoms as well as symptoms associated with memory and attention to their providers. And it's important that they do that because there are some things that we can do to help. One of the things we ask providers to do is to do this screening, to elicit these symptoms from their patients, to ask about them, and then to ensure or see if they're continuing after treatment or after maybe they expected the symptoms to resolve. Okay. So as we encourage providers to do that, then once they've identified them and how they're impacting the patient's quality of life and work and school, then they're able to take those symptoms and make referrals. And those referrals may be in the cancer center or they may be out into the community. They may involve testing, like you went through with a neuropsychologist. Mm -hmm. They may involve working with someone to learn coping skills or they may even involve medication mm -hmm. to help mitigate those symptoms and to help 
cancer survivors successfully navigate their daily lives and work and school. Awesome, it's good to know that there's resources out there. Yes, there are. Doctors and nurses have a real opportunity to reduce the impacts of problems like these and help cancer survivors like me live happy, healthier lives. Conducting recommended distress screening and advising your patients to receive treatment for psychosocial and neurocognitive concerns when they're indicated is an important part of their care. For access to training resources for healthcare providers and information about these topics, visit cdc.gov slash cancer and chronicdisease.org.